So uh, what I have done between this video and the last uh, video is build up the stand, um, which you can see here. So we've painted the pedestal sections, the two plastic parts per ped pedestal, they've been painted in the brass. The base has been left in the plastic. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I have butchered the um, labels around a little bit because I don't want the Tamiya logo on my model kit. So we've replaced that with a Japanese word from, uh, basically you get an English version, a Japanese version of the label, and I've cut off a bit of the Japanese version, which having taken a photo and had it translated, I think means Megami, but it might say Tamiya, <laughs> but in the Japanese, I don't mind it because it looks authentic to the ship. So we are now on step nine. Um, and that means we've got to do the torpedoes and then the stern deck fittings prior to fitting the upper um, aircraft deck. So um, you can have the torpedoes swung open. So if we see here, we can put polycaps in which makes them movable. But the reality is, once you put that deck on, um, you've got to have had them swung out bef before they put the deck on. And if you push them back in, they ain't ever coming back out again. So um, I, the, putting the polycaps in, bit of a gimmick, really. Uh, you, you're either going to fix them out or fix them in. Um, I'm going to do one side in, one side out, is, is my thought on that. I like to have a bit of animation where I can. Um, so... That's where we're up to, so there's a lot of parts to clean up, um, so I'm going to go and clean them up, and when that's done, we will take a look at them and the next process. Okay, so step nine um, starts with the um, torpedoes and torpedo tubes, and we have already placed three out of the four, so I'm just going to do this last one and show you how we go about that. So. Um, there's five parts to each torpedo area um, and what we're starting with is actually putting in um, a little polycap in there so we'll snip that off and then using some tweezers just going to place that and that part has been designed so that it just pushes down and holds into place. Then we have a, um, a little locking cap um, that goes over the top and that needs to be glued in place but doesn't need to be painted because it's not visible um, once it's in. So um, now what I've noticed about these is that they have a slight chamfer on them so the side that has the ejector pin mark needs to go in face down, then it fits in. If you try putting it in the other way around, it's a bit wide at the top and doesn't quite um, go down. So just pushing that into place and then simply going to run a bit of liquid poly around there. And that should be enough. Okay, so as you can see, all these parts have been painted up now so the uh, torpedoes uh, are the next thing to add and we're just going to put a little bit of glue underneath them now you can hardly see them I've painted them I've not painted the um, uh, little propellers at the end because you can only just about see the front of the uh, torpedoes if you look at the right angle so that just plops into place there so if you look through the uh, torpedo opening at that angle, you can just about see them, but you can't see them at all if the torpedo tubes are swung 
in the ready to fire position which is what we're doing on this side um, so the torpedo tube is made up of two parts you've got um, a part with the torpedoes three torpedoes loaded in and then it marries up to this top part and gives you the impression of them being loaded in the tubes now I just need to paint the tips of these black and we're using Tamiya's um, flat black for that um, so uh, I've painted the others but I wanted to um, show you what we did with this just because the torpedoes that are um, made for the rack have got a little groove along them which is the paint up to line now these don't have them um, this particular part doesn't have them so what we're doing is we're just painting up to about a millimeter away from um, the grey area where the um, torpedo uh, tube would would start um, so these are going to be very prominent because they're actually going to be hanging out over the side of the of the ship so you need to make sure you've cleaned them up nicely and you've got a nice crisp edge on um, each torpedo and that they're all nice and level right so um, this um, upper part glues into a location hole um, on the torpedo tube assembly so we're just going to marry the two together what is important is to make sure you orientate them correctly so there's a slight um, sort of length of rod down the side of one of the torpedo tubes and that needs to face out um, actually if you try and fit it you won't be able to fit it particularly well you can just about get it in but it won't sit flat and it won't sit um, um, even so you must make sure that bit sticks out um, and then we simply put the pin in the hole and push it down so it finds the um, poly cap goes down nice and easy and then we can swing her out now once this decks on you're going to be able to swing it back in but it'll be very difficult to get in and, and swing it back out so you need to position these now if that's what you're going to do so um, that is the torpedo tubes um, in place so the next thing is the fittings for the um, stern deck Okay, all the stern fittings are painted, um, so let's get those in place.
So that gets us to step 10, which is fitting these decks. Um, and on this one, there is some metal supports. And what I've done is I've screwed those into place so that they can be painted. Then we're going to take the screws out, put the deck on top. Um, I've got um, a section to be fitted at the back as, as a support, which we need to clean up and paint yet. Um, and you'll also see that we have put in a cable reel there, which has been painted in. Just need to paint the cables on it um, before we can put the deck on. So that's where we're up to right now. Right then, the um, stern lower deck has just been given uh, a wash um, ahead of having the deck go on above it. Um, and it now has that suitable sort of um, grimy sort of look. I've tried not to go too heavy, I might have overdone it slightly. Uh, so the only thing I've got left really to do is to paint in the uh, steel cables. Um, it'll get a bit darker when that um, upper deck goes on top anyway. Um, but yeah, otherwise this is done for the minute. Um, so I've used um, AK302 for this, which is a wash for grey decks. It's not a brilliant product, but actually I quite like the shade on the on the Sasebo uh, grey that we're using. Um, and I did have a play, as you can see here, I had a play with one or two other colours and, and washes um, and ended up with the AK one being the one I like the most. Now most, obviously this all gets covered up so you're not going to see this, so I was able to have a bit of a play. Um, so, and that's carried through to the um, front deck. Now I need to do a wash on the brown and I'm having a little play with that at the moment. Uh, and you can see the thinners is still flashing off here, but it just it just highlights those little details. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, looking all right, all in all. Although step nine had us build up um, all of the deck fittings um, here, step ten has us fit these um, little metal shafts, which are shiny and need to be painted up um, and they also have us add um, this structure which goes right at the end of the bow here to support the deck so these parts now need painting up so the metal shafts have had um, a single coat of paint they weren't primed um, the first coat of paint will act as a primer so I'm just putting down first coat of paint um, on this um, end support for the um, upper deck and then we can go back and put a second coat over those um, metal shafts. Now they're screwed in place but they're not glued in. They, they fit into recessed holes but, uh, and they're relatively tight fitting. I think if, as long as we put the, the deck down with care, we shouldn't have a problem. So whilst we've got the um, sassy bow grey paint out, I do have some items on this um, deck that were too difficult to mask because they're low lighting, um, but need to be um, picked out in the sassy bow grey. So I'm just going to do that while we've got the paint out, and then um, we don't forget to do it. We can paint in the cable reels now. Um, I'm going to use uh, the titanium silver for the cable reels. They ha it gives it a nice sort of oily look in my, my view. But, uh, see what you think when it's done. Well, that's the cable reel done. This will just focus. I think that looks quite good. I, I, I like that effect personally. Okay, so our um, support structure that goes on the end of the deck is now dry. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put some liquid poly on the 
tabs before we shove it on the deck because I don't want to risk any um, possibility that the uh, paint lifts with the glue. So that means we can now put this deck on. So, just having a quick check of the instructions. We have some poly caps to put in there first. So let's get that done. So we're putting the large poly caps in. Then what we need to do is take these little screws out and what ideally I want to happen is that I leave these little metal shafts behind. The fact that uh, this screwdriver is magnetised is really helpful. just lift the screw out and we're managing to do a fairly good job I think of not damaging the paintwork which is was a little bit of a worry there we go so we can now carefully put the deck on if we look underneath we've got three little location points for that and then th and we've got some tabs that go underneath here so I'm hoping if we go in tab first, everything will align, um, and then the deck should sit on top of there. So let's see. Tab in. Okay, that all fits like a glove, so I'm just going to drop the screws into their holes to start with. I'm going to screw them in first and then we have another um, screw to go um, into here. Um, a larger screw that goes in the back here. That is the deck on, so there's no need for any glue because it's held, held down with those fasteners. Um, and we'll just have a quick check. Yeah, the deck is sitting on the support bracket, perfectly fine. Our deck, flight deck in place. So much of what we've built up on that stern can't be seen now. Um, other than when you look at you can see there's lumps and shapes but you can't really tell what is there and you'll see that the uh, um, flight deck tends to um, what the, the, the height raises towards the stern is what I'm trying to say okay that completes step 10 um, oh no it doesn't I beg your pardon we've got some poly caps to put in so let's do that next. So um, these are small poly caps. That's two. And then we have two little plates. 
tapes that go on top to lock them in place. Um, so I just need to tidy them up and then we'll be able to just glue them in. So let's get that done. Obviously these won't be seen so I'm not bothered about painting them There's something that goes on top. So we just need to tack them into place with a bit of extra thin job done that is step 10 complete so um, next is step 11 quite logically um, and we are moving now to the bow to do um, bow deck fittings <laughs> so the ladders that Tamiya provide um, at this stage um, are plastic ladders and uh, my issue with them is that they're too thick, they don't have handrails um, and they, well they just don't look right um, and we, we are beyond that at, at this point in the manufacturer models um, so what we need to do is replace those with etch and, and why when Tamiya add a, um, etch into their kits why they are not putting ladders in is beyond me but what we will do is we will replace with some photo etched inclined ladders so like so and that will look an awful lot better and realistic and then what we've got to do when we put the railing on um, that isn't supplied we've got to make sure that we connect it up to the um, start edge of that so um, yeah um, not a biggie uh, but we've got to make sure that that platform is is taken into account when we put the um, railings on that's all. all right. otherwise all these other parts can just be cleaned up and painted so I'm going to clean them up and I'll see you when we're ready to paint so what I'm doing with the um, kit supply cable reels, um, because they've been good enough to make the um, individual parts, the ones that weren't moulded into the deck, um, with a completely round core, um, I'm cutting the ends off and preserving the core, um, which allows me to um, gauge the length. Then we're using the aftermarket etch um, cable reels to fold back up and we use that core as the center of the cable reel so we can paint it and we preserve um, the, all the little grooves that have been put in on the kit part um, and they end up looking quite good so it's just a matter of removing this molded on end I mean they're, they're not so bad but you've got no detail on the end they're just blank at the end um, uh, so in my mind they just don't quite look right um, and it's a little thing to improve uh, that makes all the difference to the overall look of, of the ship because they are quite a, a prominent feature on the decks so that's what we're doing with those so I'm going to modify those in a sec we've got two of those to modify um, and then in the main what we're doing is painting the undersides of all the parts then we'll fit them and then we can touch up the upper sides um, when it's uh, when they're fitted um, so uh, I just want to test fit these and make sure we're not going to have any issue with the um, barbettes so let's just do that next but the one thing with the Tamiya is you know it'll sl slot together so if you've not built um, a model ship before and you're fairly new to um, modeling or you're the type of modeler that doesn't doesn't really like to have to fuss around to make parts fit then um, a Tammy ship is definitely the way to go um, just bear in mind that you will be losing some detail okay let's get um, this ladder built up next 
So, I think these came out of my etch for the graph spay, trumpeter's graph spay, um, and they are the um, additional etch that I bought, um, which I seem to think was Edward, I'm not 100% sure, um, which left me with some spare ladders. Okay. That is our ladder done. So we'll paint that upside down and paint the back of it that we don't have access to. And then we can fit it and paint, paint the rest up once she's fitted. Right, we've painted up the um, parts ready for the um, step 11 assembly. Let me just move the bow into view and um, what time you do and I really like it on their instructions is they're showing you here the sort of traditional view of where to put the parts so you can see the cable reels the capstans the mushroom vents and the barbettes all going in and, and the paravanes and those horrid ladders but then what they do is they give you an overhead view so you can see the orientation um, of the mushroom vents because some are facing forwards and some are facing backwards and that's very helpful so uh, you can see it on this view so they don't need to do it but it does make it really clear and <clears throat> I think as we get further in the build um, yeah I think if we get further in the build we have some in, uh, facing different directions again so it is helpful and it's a nice little touch. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put mushroom vents in next um, and uh, use this as, as the guide. Um, because I've already taken them off the sprue, um, I don't know the numbers, but I know that this 26 is the small one and 25 is the, is the larger one, so we should be fine. We're also then going to put in the uh, cable reels which includes the one that we, was moulded on that we've uh, built a replacement for. I'm just going to put the reamer in. better. If you've not got one of these Rima tools you really need one especially if you build ships they're so handy. Much more con convenient than using uh, a drill.
think you'll have to agree that makes such a difference replacing the ladders. There we have it. So barbettes are next. Right, so uh, we're going to put the barbettes in now. Uh, and we need poly caps before I glue them in, which I only just remembered in the nick of time. So underneath each one of these is a little um, retaining point for a poly cap so what we do is push the poly cap on the inside of that now it's quite a loose fit because it just drops out so um, it's a little tricky so I'm going to use um, this thicker glue and put a little bit on the inside, not cl too close to the edge. Then you can see I'm holding the poly cap in place. There you go, and that's it. So we don't need to overdo the glue, we don't need to put glue all the way around, we just need enough to hold it in place. Okay, second one in. At the top of these, I know they look a bit scruffy, but once the guns are in place, you won't see those. Okay, now this had quite a tight fit anyway, and the poly cap goes on the top of this. So, I'm not planning on putting any glue on this, because I know it's a tight fit. Just want to check that seated properly. Yeah. So just needed a bit of a push. But as you can see, I can pick my whole model up by that. So it doesn't need any glue. Right. So we put the last poly cap in. into place and then I'm going to put a little bit of glue like we did on the deck I'm going to use just three little spots of glue on the inside of that cap that goes on the top and that is our main gun barbettes in place so my next job is painting in the steel of the cable reels so just as before, I'm using this uh, lacquer paint. When it first goes on, um, it looks really bright. I have to say, the lacquer paint, tell me lacquer paints, Metallic ones are really nice. I might keep the metallics because they do go down nice and they look really good. It's a nice, it, it, you can't see the speckles, um, the metallic speckles if you like. It does go down very nice. But just a word of warning, if you've not used um, lacquer paints before, um, 
I've inadvertently done something which has reminded me. Um, I'm using this bit of tissue paper with a bit of lacquer thinners on to clean my brush. Um, and it does a brilliant job of cleaning my brush. But then, I've, without thought, rather than putting it in my sprue bin, which is what I normally do, and what I'm going to do now, um, I inadvertently put it on the table next to my uh, plastic holder, which has got all my little scraping tools in. And that's what's happened. It's melted the plastic. So you must be careful. And don't get lacquer thinners on your model. Um, because it will eat the plastic. Um, as you can see, it's eating through a couple of layers of the plastic there, and it's all fogged up. So yeah, it, the, the, the heat of it has melted the plastic. So just take a bit of care. Okay, the um, titanium silver um, that we've used on the cable rails has dried, but it is a little bright, and I want to pick out the detail a little bit. So I'm using Tamiya's black panel liner. Um, as a as a wash, but what I'm going to do is rather than dolloping it on with this horrendously thick brush, I'm going to use a paintbrush just to put it on in it with a bit more control. I don't want too much. I just want enough. To show off the detail a bit and also when you put the black wash on it pulls the shine down a little bit which is also helpful there we go they look, uh, they look like steel ropes now I think Right, so that completes step 11.